Day one of NHL free agency was highlighted for the Boston Bruins by a trade. Eric Haula for Pavel Zaka, as well as the additions of a bunch of depth players. What didn't happen was an announcement in regards to David Krejci, Patrice Bergeron, or a contract extension for David Pasternak, leaving the projected opening night roster looking a little murky. We're going to talk about all that and more on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren. And this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be, as well as take a look around the NHL. Today is Thursday, July 14th, and I want to thank you for making Locked On Bruins part of your day every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts, as well as on YouTube. So please hit that subscribe button on your podcast app and on your YouTube app so that you never miss an episode and so that you don't miss any breaking news clips over on the YouTube page as well. Locked on Boston Bruins is where you can find it. If you're on uh, Twitter, you can find the podcast at LockedNHLBruins, although it seems as though Twitter is down here on Thursday morning. Uh, You can also find me, my dad jokes, hockey tweets, at Ian C. McLaren. We talked yesterday on the podcast about the acquisition of Pavel Zaka in exchange for Eric Howla. Now, Don Sweeney met with the media around 5 p.m. on Wednesday to discuss this move as well as uh, the free agent signings of several depth players. We'll talk about that in a moment. But I just wanted to talk first about uh, the Zaka deal and what Sweeney had to say about it. Zaka... 25 years old, selected 6th overall in 2015. He had a career-high 17 goals in 50 games in 2020-21. That was his most productive offensive season. I believe he averaged around 0.7 points per game. Sweeney said the Bruins felt that Zaka was a player they had targeted in the middle of the ice, and as a multi-positional player, he can play all three forward positions as a left-hand shot. He's obviously younger than Hala, six years difference between them. And there's growth and potential there moving forward. He is a restricted free agent. His qualifying offer is worth $3 million. And I believe he can become an unrestricted free agent as early as next summer. Sweeney said they hope to be able to find a deal with him, being part of the organization now and beyond. Remains to be seen how long that is, of course, but they're going to attack that right away with his representatives. He said he felt like it was an opportunity for now and potentially moving forward. They identified a player that fit into the organization and they're excited about. At the end of the day, you're trading a 31-year-old versatile forward for a 25 year old versatile forward with high upside higher upside anyways and the hope is that he can become a feature player for the Bruins beyond this season worst case he signs his one-year qualifying offer doesn't come back and they can look elsewhere next summer for a player of his ilk. Uh, where exactly he's going to play kind of depends on where and if uh, Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci do come back. Um, again, he can play all three positions and he sees himself as a center, but he's excited to join the Bruins and fit in wherever he can. Um, not really worried about the position. Obviously, there's lots of opportunity to begin the season. 
say with a Brad Marchand out, he'll have a significant opportunity early on the power play, situational play that he can benefit from. The Bruins do believe there's more potential here, and it's up to uh, Pavel Zaka to take advantage of the opportunities he's presented with and become uh, the player that people envisioned that he would be when he was selected sixth overall back in 2015. Sweeney also did thank Halla for his contributions to the Bruins last season, included a strong second half as number two center between Taylor Hall and David Pasternak, 44 points in 78 games. Big part of our team this past season, Sweeney said, and he did a tremendous job wishing him well in New Jersey. But for now, Pavel Zaka comes in, <clears throat> 25 years old. Uh, he has a higher offensive ceiling than he has displayed again back in 2020. 2021, I believe he was the Devils' leading scorer that season. And, um, yeah, he definitely has some offensive upside that perhaps we have yet to see. Um, he's He was playing behind Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer at center in New Jersey, guys like... Jesper Bratt, Igor Sharangovich emerged as high-end wingers for them. Uh, but two seasons ago, he did lead the Devils in scoring four more points than Hughes, who was, you know, still finding his way at that time in six fewer games played. Uh, not saying he's Jack Hughes, but there's potential there for sure. The Bruins identified it. They swapped Hala for Zaka, and I think they should be better off for it this season, and especially down the road, if he does indeed sign long-term. We're going to talk more about the signings that did and did not happen yesterday here in a moment, but first, a quick word about Athletic Greens. What is this stuff? Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you can absorb 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food-sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. It's a special blend of ingredients that supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Pretty much all the things that we're concerned about at this stage of life, to be honest. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues, ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover that cost him $100 a day. He created Athletic Greens after experiencing how difficult it was to create an optimal nutrition routine on your own. Right now, it's time for you to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. One scoop and a cup of water every day, that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune support vitamin D and five free travel packs your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. That's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So the Bruins on Wednesday made a handful of additions, mostly depth players signed to two-way contracts, uh, including netminder Keith Kincaid, who spent the last two seasons uh, in the Rangers organization, uh, they also added Minnesota native Vinny Lettieri, defenseman Connor Carrick, and Daniel Renouf. Uh, they were all signed to one way, two, sorry, one year, two way contracts. One player who was signed to a 
one-way contract, two-year one-way contract, in fact, with a cap hit of $762,500, is 25-year-old forward A.J. Greer, another player from the 2015 NHL entry draft. He was selected in the second round, 39th overall. He recorded one goal and an assist in nine games for the Devils last season, but at the AHL level, he produced at nearly a point-per-game pace with the Utica Comets, 22 goals, 30 assists in 53 games. Sweeney said he had a heck of a year offensively. He understands from talking to him, doing their background on him, that um, what type of player he is, how to be successful, and hopefully that translates at the NHL level. From a skating and speed standpoint, getting on pucks and being an aggressive mindset with his size, it's an attractive quality for the Bruins to add to the group, according to general manager Don Sweeney. Jim Montgomery, he added, is excited about going through the coaching process how he envisioned the bottom part of the lineup looking, and it was an area they tried to identify. AJ was a guy they feel had some upside there as well. So again, very interesting with Greer. He is signed to a two-year, one-way deal, meaning he's not necessarily guaranteed Guaranteed uh, a roster spot with the Bruins, but he has that salary guarantee, anyways. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to see exactly where he fits in. He seems pretty excited about the opportunity. He posted on Instagram, Twitter. He said, from the junior Bruins to playing for Boston University, where he's currently completing his degree. Boston has such a special place for my family and I, he said. Being part of the Boston Bruins is a dream come true and a full circle moment. Thank you to everyone who has pushed me to become the player and person I am today. Uh, so AJ Greer will get an opportunity to crack the Bruins opening night roster. There will be obviously some opportunities, uh, certainly with injuries to begin the season. Uh, but AJ Greer, left hand, left wing, 25 years old, uh, and given a one-way contract by the Boston Bruins. Now the Bruins did experience some losses in free agency as well, and some of these guys were brought in to cover that. For example, Curtis Lazar signed a three-year, $3 million deal with the Vancouver Canucks. Sweeney said they wish Curtis well. He was a really great Bruin. He's landing closer to home. Vancouver is lucky to have him. Uh, depth defenseman Josh Brown signed a two-year deal with Arizona. Um, Cameron Hughes, who spent the last five seasons in the organization, after being drafted in the sixth round in 2015, assigned in Seattle on a two-year, two-way deal. Veteran center Stephen Fogarty inked a two-year, two-way contract with the Minnesota Wild. Jesper Froden, who made his NHL debut with the Bruins last season, signed a one-year, two-way deal with Seattle. And goalie Troy Grosnick signed a one-year, one-way contract with the Philadelphia Flyers. So, Grosnick moving out, Froden moving out, Brown, Hughes, Lazar, the Bruins needed to bring some depth back into the organization. They added Carrick, Renouf, uh, Greer, Kincaid, and uh, Lettieri as well. Uh, Lettieri played 82 NHL games over four seasons with the Rangers and Ducks. 10 points in 31 games for Anaheim last season. A guy who could see some time with the Bruins this year for sure. And you know, if one of 
Swayman, Allmark, injured at some point. Keith Kincaid could make an appearance as well. He does have plenty of experience at the NHL level. Carrick I really like as well. I've talked before about how you know the Bruins are without McAvoy to begin the season. Depth on the right side, incredibly low with Brandon Carlo, Connor Clifton, Victor Berglund. Now Carrick, you know, if he has a strong camp, he could even be on the opening night roster. So that's what Don Sweeney did on Wednesday to begin free agency. The I, I don't want to say the biggest story, but a big story was what did not occur, and that was any announcement in terms of Patrice Bergeron coming back, David Krejci coming back, or a contract extension for David Posternock. We're going to talk about that here in a moment, but first a quick word about Built Bar. From the people who invented healthy and tasty comes the latest gift to your taste buds. You've probably tried the amazing coconut brownie chunk Built Bar, but guess what? Your friends at Built have given coconut brownie chunk the puffs treatment. That's right, the coconut brownie chunk Built Bar flavor you love, now in a deliciously chewy marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. We'll stop drooling and listen carefully. These are good for you. Low calorie, low sugar, high protein, all delicious. They also are made with a collagen protein that your body absorbs more efficiently, and it provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. Go to build.com, use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That's LOCKED15. For 15% off your coconut brownie chunk built puffs or any of their built offerings over at built.com. Thank you so much again for making Locked On Bruins your first listen every day. Now make your second listen the Locked On NHL podcast. Locked On experts give you daily 30 minute podcasts on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date. On every bit of news in the hockey world, Locked On NHL is your daily 30-minute podcast. Now when it comes to Patrice Bergeron, David Krejci, General Manager Don Sweeney said nothing has changed. There's no update as of right now in terms of finalizing anything. He thinks they're still in a really good place with Patrice. It's just the timing and working out the details of his contract, allowing him to declare he's good to go. Could be any time frame there, really. Just working through some of the stuff, letting the first day of free agency pass, and he's the only one who's going to make that final announcement because he's the one who has the final say. In terms of David Krejci, they've had numerous discussions throughout the day, going to try to continue to find some common ground there remains positive, but he just doesn't have any clear cut answers. Now the Bruins, if you look at their cap friendly page, they have 4.758 available cap space, projected cap space. You'd think that would be, you know, plenty of room to get those guys signed on a base salary with incentives perhaps but you have to remember that Pavel Zaka is due a three million dollar qualifying offer and um, they also have to decide if they're going to give Jack Stanika and Jack Ashan one-way or two-way deals so perhaps the Bruins are trying to clear out some more cap space in order to get one of these guys or both of these guys signed. You have Craig Smith, Thomas Nosick, Chris Wagner, who could come off the books, uh, Nick Felino, Charlie Coyle even. Those guys have no move clauses, uh, and it would take some time to figure out where they would be willing to go and uh, and things like that. But... I'm more convinced that 
the delay in getting these guys signed has to do with clearing some space and avoiding having overages next season. If you structure their contracts in a way that it's a low base and fairly easy to attain incentives, then they have to pay towards that next season as well, which you don't necessarily want to happen. Uh, Don Sweeney said it didn't really affect what they were or weren't able to do yesterday. Um, you know, they weren't necessarily going to be very active. Anyways, a lot of teams hit the accelerator in some situations, he said. Uh, some teams positioned themselves to add. Some of them ready to subtract in the plan of tanking. Um, he said it doesn't really matter if he knows sooner or later because A, they're respecting Bergeron's ability to dictate his own timeline. Krejci's only recently indicated a term in terms of where he'd like to be, so there's not really a level of urgency there. That's kind of a bonus, really. I don't think they were necessarily expecting him to be back. Um, the sooner you can get these things done for closure, it's nice. But really, they have until all summer into training camp to figure this out. Worst case, they put somebody on LTIR, get them signed, and then try to figure things out as the season progresses. He said they're not being aggressive when it comes to signing other forwards. They've got a little bit of view to the back end, given a couple of the injuries, if something presents itself there. Um, some teams have asked about some of their players. They're staying in talks in that regard, but they're not aggressively in the marketplace at this point. I mentioned some forwards they can move. There's also Mike Riley. Derek Forbort, who has a modified no-trade clause as well. Uh, Matt Grizzlick as well. That could be moved. Now, when it comes to David Posternock, there's nothing concrete there yet. They didn't exchange any numbers on the first day of eligibility to sign a contract extension. Uh, they can now. They're going to get right to work in seeing where Pasternak is at, and they'll take an aggressive mindset, hopefully find common ground there. But there's no timeline. Uh, I believe it was Ty Anderson who kind of pressed this, why they hadn't exchanged numbers yet. And Sweeney said today was the first day that they could, or yesterday was, I should say. Um, there was a lot going on elsewhere, just not an area they'll touch on. Sweeney, somewhat sarcastically perhaps, said maybe I'll call tonight and let you, Ty, know after that whether or not I've actually exchanged numbers if you're that concerned about it. <sighs> Bit of passive aggression there. They're going to attack it in an aggressive mindset and see where it hopefully plays out. No real definitive timeline there. So that's all the latest on the Boston Bruins when it comes to additions that were made. AJ Greer, Pavel Zaka added. Greer with the one-way contract. Zaka, restricted free agent, do a $3 million qualifying offer. I guess one question that could be asked is, are Bergeron, Krejci, probably Krejci in particular, waiting to see if Pasternak re-signs or is back this coming season, I think that's a major impetus for him wanting to return to the Boston Bruins is to play with Pasta. If Pasta's contract negotiations don't go well, and heaven forbid the Bruins trade him this summer, and then Krejci's left coming back without Pasternak in the mix, then that could be a wrinkle as well. So it's probably a mix of finding the right contract parameters, 
trying to open up some cap space to make that a bit easier. But in Krejci's case, it could also be seeing how things go with David Posternak. In Bergeron's case, seeing how his elbow feels, and it really does seem as though he will indeed be back. If neither comes back, the Bruins are in serious trouble, and I could see a team like the Ottawa Senators jumping up and grabbing their spot in the Atlantic Division. I could see the Florida Panthers taking a dip as well, so maybe that will balance out. We'll have to see. Early days still. The biggest surprise yesterday, of course, was Johnny Godreau signing with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Does that make them a playoff team? I don't know. But the East is certainly becoming more and more competitive. And without Bergeron and Krejci, the Bruins are destined to lose some ground for sure. That's it for today's episode, my friends. Thank you so much for taking some time to listen. Quick update. I am heading to Ottawa, Montreal for the next several days. Hope to have a podcast episode up for tomorrow. Next week may be a bit sparse. Of course, if there is any major breaking news, I'll be sure to find some time to record. But uh, might only be one, two podcast episodes next week, and then I'll be back the following week with a full slate. Uh, But just so you are all aware there. Hope you're all having a great week. I am excited about Pavel Zaka in black and gold. I hope he can stay here for some time. And uh, fingers crossed that there's some Bergeron and Krejci positive movement here sooner than later. Happy Thursday. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we'll talk to you again soon here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.